Hey y'all, I'm Jake and welcome to my channel. I love to travel and I've been to 88 countries and territories across all seven continents. And today I'm gonna to be telling you everything you need to know about visiting Antarctica. And before I get started, I wanted to let you know I'm partnering with Oceanwide Expeditions and you can save 10% off any of their voyages to the Arctic or Antarctic with promo code JAKEOEX. You can use this code when booking over the phone or click on the link in the description below and use the code at checkout. Okay, so let's start off with how people visit Antarctica. Well, the majority of people visit Antarctica with a travel company and I went with Oceanwide Expeditions. There are so many different companies that you can go to Antarctica with. However, I did a lot of research and I found that Oceanwide Expeditions was the best fit for me. Two of the main things that I was looking for were cost and affordability as well as ship size because I not only didn't want to extremely break the bank since Antarctica trips, as we all know, are extremely expensive, but I wanted to have the best experience possible and I wanted to do that by being on a smaller ship because being on a smaller ship allows you to do so much more when visiting Antarctica. And Oceanwide Expeditions was able to provide that to me. So Oceanwide Expeditions is a Dutch company that specializes in polar voyages. They visit the Arctic and Antarctic and they've been around for 30 years. So they have a lot of experience in both these regions of the world and they truly are an exceptional company and I'm excited to share more about the two different Antarctica itineraries that I was fortunate enough to go on back in 2023. My first trip that I booked with Oceanwide Expeditions was in 2019. I booked their Falkland Island, South Georgia Island and Antarctica trip. Unfortunately, due to COVID, it got postponed twice, but finally in January of 2023, I got to go on this voyage. And let me tell you, it was the most amazing and emotional travel experience of my entire life. This voyage took place on their ship, the Plantius. The Plantius is their oldest ship in the fleet and it holds approximately 100 passengers. I was originally booked in a quad share room, but with the postponements, I ended up getting upgraded to a twin share room, and I had a random roommate, which was another perk that Oceanwide had that made it so much more affordable. I'll talk a little bit more about rooming later on in the video, but right now I want to hop into the Falkland, South Georgia, and Antarctica itinerary. Before I get started, I need to note that when it comes to any Antarctic voyage, itineraries are never really set in place. There is a general idea of when you will be in certain areas, but you will have a list of different landing sites that are possible and you really can't know where you're gonna land because everything is weather dependent. So this tour started in Ushuaia we boarded the Plantius and then we headed out to sea for two days before we arrived to the Falkland Islands. In the Falklands, we were there for two days. We were able to visit West Point and Carcass Island, as well as visiting Stanley, the capital of the Falklands. The Falkland Islands are absolutely stunning. The water is extremely blue. It feels like you might be in the tropics. They have a large array of wildlife such as elephant seals, rock hopper penguins, gentoo penguins, Magellanic penguins, and more. And Stanley is the capital and it's a very cute little town. After visiting the Falklands, we headed out to sea for another two days until we reached South Georgia, where we spent the next four days visiting places like Salisbury Plain, Gritviken, Stromness, Olaf Harbor, St. Andrews Bay, and more. South Georgia is definitely the jewel of the Subantarctic. 
There are four different species of penguins you can see with some of the largest king penguin colonies in the world, as well as the largest populations of southern elephant seals and the largest population of Antarctic fur seals. I really hope that I can make it back to South Georgia one day because it really is an absolutely amazing place. When we visited Gritvikin, we were even able to send postcards which is super cool because South Georgia is such a remote place that it was such a special place to be able to send postcards from. After visiting South Georgia, there were another two days at sea before we made it to Elephant Island, which was our first stop in Antarctica. And then the following day, we made it to the peninsula where we spent the next two days visiting places like Paulette Island and Devil Island and Brown Bluff. After that, we were supposed to visit the Shetlands, but like I said, everything's weather dependent, so we unfortunately weren't able to get off in the Shetlands, and we ended up heading back through the Drake early to get back to Ushuaia. This voyage specifically is very wildlife oriented. Unlike some other itineraries, there aren't as many activities such as kayaking and snowshoeing or mountaineering but we did get to go on hikes and we got to see such a large variety of wildlife. We saw seven different species of penguin. We saw elephant seals, Antarctic fur seals, leopard seals, wet owl seals, orcas, humpback whales, minke whales, fin whales. It was just so much wildlife that we saw over the course of three weeks and it was truly unbelievable. And in terms of the demographic, I felt like this itinerary definitely had an older demographic with the majority of people ranging from around 50 to 70 years old. However, there were a few of us that were in a younger demographic. And really, you get to meet so many different amazing people on these voyages. Ten months later, I was fortunate enough to go on my second expedition to Antarctica, again with Oceanwide, but this time it was their Antarctica base camp trip, which is a totally different kind of trip. And I was excited because this time, instead of visiting the eastern part of the peninsula where I visited on my first trip, I was going to visit the western part of the peninsula, which is the more visited region of Antarctica. And not only that, I was going to be able to spend a full seven days in Antarctica versus four days on the first expedition. So now I'm going to hop into that itinerary, which was also on a different ship. I was on the Artilius during the base camp trip, and that is another one of their older ships in the fleet. The fleet for Antarctica consists of the Plancius, the Artilius, and the Hondius, and I went on the Plancius the first time, and the second time I was on the Ortilius. This ship was also around 100 person capacity. For this itinerary, we also left out of the port of Ushuaia. It took two days to cross the Drake Passage, and we arrived in Antarctica. We spent around six days around the actual peninsula, mostly in the area of the Gerlach Strait. We visited places like Orn Harbor, Danko Island, Paradise Bay, Des Moines Point, Neko Harbor, the Melchior Islands, and more. On our final day in Antarctica, we had made our way up to the Shetlands, where we visited Deception Island, and there we were able to do a polar plunge, which was super fun. It was very cold, but it was super fun. I also did a polar plunge on the first expedition at Brown Bluff, so it was cool to do it in a different location. During this expedition, we saw a variety of wildlife and we also got to do so many cool activities that are part of the base camp trip, such as kayaking, mountaineering, and camping. I'd have to say that camping and kayaking were two of my favorite activities, but being able to camp in Antarctica is definitely something that I will never forget. Digging a hole in the snow and sleeping without a tent just in a sleeping bag was just an absolutely amazing experience. During this voyage, we also had the opportunity to see a lot of penguins, a lot of Gentoo and Chinstrap penguins, as well as one day we saw 
40 plus humpback whales. It was truly just an unbelievable expedition. And after being at the peninsula and Shetlands, it was another two days back to Ushuaia. And that trip was a total of around two weeks. So now that I've addressed the two different itineraries that I went on with Oceanwide, I'd like to go into some more general Antarctica questions and also some general Oceanwide questions. So to start off, I want to talk about packing. I think something that I've learned going to Antarctica twice, the first time I packed in a full-size suitcase, which I really ended up thinking was a big no-no. I shouldn't have done that. The second time I ended up being able to pack in a carry-on and I'm going to link my packing in the description and I'm also going to post the video right here and go through a little bit of what I packed. So the most important thing you need to do is pack layers. Layers are so important because the weather is going to greatly vary while you're visiting Antarctica or the sub-Antarctic islands. For example, when I was in the Falkland Islands on the first trip, there was one day it was in the 60s. I actually happened to have shorts because I was visiting Argentina as well, and I ended up wearing the shorts that day, which is not really that common. But other days when you get to South Georgia or Antarctica, it can be extremely windy. And even if it's 40 degrees out, it could feel like it's in the 20s or in Antarctica, it could be 40 degrees one day and the next day it can be snowing. So thermal layers are super important. You want to have warm socks, you want to have gloves, hat, a balaclava, something to cover your face. Um, definitely have a warm jacket. Specifically for Oceanwide, they do not provide a jacket. So you, if you're going to travel with them, you need to bring your own jacket. But there are also opportunities to rent outer gear from them as well on board. It is also important to note that if you do want to bring just a carry-on, that there is laundry on board that comes at an extra cost. I didn't have to use it while I was on board other than after the polar plunge because I didn't want to pack stinky wet ocean clothes in my suitcase so I had all that sent straight to laundry but really I think you can fit everything you need in a carry-on. I packed some cotton short sleeve and long sleeve shirts and sweatpants to wear on board because when you're on board you should be comfortable and you really also need to make sure that you have good sneakers that have good supports for when you're on the outer decks. You don't have to bring specific shoes to go on landings because you will be using the muck boots that Oceanwide provides for you. But while you're on board, you need to have secure boots because the outer decks can be slippery and dangerous, especially if you're wearing shoes that have no support. Okay, so another thing I wanted to address is where these voyages start and end. And this is not just something that applies to Oceanwide Expeditions, Antarctic voyages, but 95% of Antarctic voyages start and end in Ushuaia, Argentina. Ushuaia is mostly recognized as the southernmost city in the world, and it has a large port and is in a great location for these expeditions to leave from. For ocean-wide expeditions, your flights and pre-accommodations are not included in the price of the voyage. However, if you're an experienced traveler or maybe not an experienced traveler, I found it personally really easy to just book my flights to Ushuaia and get a hotel or Airbnb in Ushuaia. For me, I left from New York. I flew from New York to Buenos Aires and then from Buenos Aires down to Ushuaia. Um, that travel time's about 15 hours or so. And once you're in Ushuaia, it's a really cute city. I've actually been there three times. So you definitely don't want to get there the same day that your voyage leaves. I'd recommend getting there at least one to two nights early, maybe even three nights, because there are definitely activities that you can do in Ushuaia that are super fun. Another topic I wanted to readdress was ship size. Going back to one of the main reasons I chose Oceanwide is that for at least the two ships that I went on, the max capacity was around 100 people. For their newer ship, the Hondius, that ship is still under 200 person capacity. And why is it so important that your ship has a small capacity? Because that means 
that you get to spend more time on shore. And for companies that have ships that are 500 plus, they don't even get to get off the ship. So the smaller the ship, the less people, the less people, the more time you get to spend off the ship. I mean, why would you want to go to Antarctica and not get to spend as much time off the ship as possible? One of the most asked questions that I need to address is what is it like crossing the Drake Passage? <laughs> so for me, we were kind of really lucky. The first time I had to cross the Drake Passage, we had a little bit of a Drake shake. Um, the second time we had a little bit of rough water, but I never had anything that that crazy. I think social media tends to scare people when it comes to the Drake Passage. But from what I can tell is the chances that you're going to get 40 foot waves are slim. And some people tend to over dramatize what the Drake Passage is like on things like Instagram and TikTok. So it's definitely something that you should take with a grain of salt. Not to say that it can't be bad and you won't get seasick because some people get seasick with really small waves. We had, I mean, the first time I think we had 15 foot waves, which for the general person is, is a lot. Um, but there are medications that you can take. People bring Dramamine, people bring uh, motion sickness bands, and you can also bring scoplamine patches and scoplamine patches are also available to get from the doctor on board that you can buy. Another thing people seem to be curious about is what do you do on board when you're not doing excursions? So what are you doing during sea days or what are you doing at the during the evenings? During sea days, they're filled with things like lectures or there's games at the bar area that you can play. You can socialize. You can go to the outer decks. Once you're around an island or in Antarctica, you might want to spend all of your time on the outer decks because you never know what you're going to see, especially like things like whales. And it's just absolutely stunning scenery. So really, you're never going to be bored on the ship, even during sea days. So what's included on an ocean-wide expedition voyage? Well, your voyage, once you board that ship, basically everything's included. You have an expedition staff. You have your voyages, Zodiac cruises, landings. I mean, if you're on a base camp trip like I did the second time, kayaking's included, mountaineering's included, photo workshops included, camping's included, snowshoeing's included, water is accessible on the boat at all times, and there's also a coffee and hot chocolate machine that is accessible at all times, as well as being able to make tea. Soft drinks and alcohol are not included, but you do get three meals a day, and the food is absolutely amazing. I loved both the food on the Palancius and on the Ortilius. You're never hungry when you're on the ship because you're just being fed amazing food literally every day. In addition, your muck boots are included and kayaking gear is included for when you go kayaking and also camping gear is included as well. One of the last things I wanted to touch upon again was cost and how that works with Oceanwide. So when you book an Oceanwide Expeditions trip, you have to put down a 20% deposit. After that, you can pay off the trip manually up until I think around two to three months before. That's when you have to have the trip fully paid off. Like I said, if you take an Oceanwide itinerary and compare it to another company, it is significantly less expensive than other companies. And there are certain companies that could be deemed more luxurious but even on those companies, you might end up having to pay an additional $800 to go camping or another $1,000 to go kayaking. All of these things, if they are on the Oceanwide itinerary, they are included in the price. And then if you're a young person like me and you want something more affordable, they have that option to have random rooming. So you could be in a twin share room or a triple share room or a quad share room with random roommates and this allows Oceanwide to make the trip more affordable for solo travelers. So if you're a young person out there and you want to go to Antarctica, Oceanwide would be an amazing fit for you. And don't forget, I also have a promo 
The promo is Jake OEX, and you can save 10% off your Oceanwide Expedition, and you will literally have the best time of your life.